Okay, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the Sabbath, for the meeting this morning, and for this study here that we can gather together, and that your Holy Spirit can unite our hearts and minds, and that we can see things in your word uh, that can give us light for our feet, uh, that can comfort us and let us know that you are in control of our lives. And we pray, Lord, that, that uh, this study will be to your glory. Thank you for your Holy Spirit and the work upon our hearts in convicting us of sin. And be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, happy Sabbath, everyone. So um, we're continuing this study on the symbolic use of numbers. And, and one of the things that I've, I've, I've tried to emphasize is that uh, the purpose of this is not just a bunch of intellectual curiosity. Uh, the main purpose of this study is to go through the history of how uh, truths were unfolded to this movement regarding uh, chronology and numbers and the place that they have in the role of correcting us and guiding us on the path that God uh, has placed us, which is a path, if we look at the other study, of uh, rebuking sin. And that path, though, is not just, you know, character assassination or anything like that. It's actually a work. It's it's a three step testing prophetic message uh, that develops and demonstrates two classes of worshipers. And so we want to be of a class that is going to reveal Christ's character to others that is able to be able um, to con bring conviction through the presentation of God's word. And so. Um, when we're going through all of this history, I'm, I'm going through it roughly in a chronological way. Last week, we looked at what I had discovered in 2015 uh, regarding Revelation chapter nine. And that was a symbol of a symbol being the 26th day of the fourth month. And at the time, um, it didn't mean anything to me. That is, I knew that the 26th day of the fourth month uh, was part of the prophecy of Revelation nine that it's the 26th day of the fourth month when uh, the, um, the the first woe begins on July 27th, uh, 1299. And it's going to be, you know, the 27th day of, 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 of July in 1299. So July 27th, but it's going to be the 26th day of the fourth, fourth month on the biblical calendar. And it's a Julian date in that year. And then I noticed that it was the 26th day of the fourth month in July 27th in 1840, though on the Julian calendar. And that opened up all kinds of things for us to notice. But these were, the significance of this was not going to be understood until 2018. Now, um, in 2016, um, there's a lot of things that I was studying at that time. Mostly I was focused upon uh, the chronology of the Babylonian captivity. That is, uh, late in 2015, and Kelly will remember because he was at the camp meeting in the fall of 2015, and the discussion was regarding a paper I had written for the elders of my church uh, called um, Why There's Not a 25-20 Year period of continual punishment for literal Israel found in Leviticus 26. And, and the reason that I was wrote, good, good paper, by the that, way. what that was good paper, by the way, that was a good paper, by the way. Yeah. And, and I'm going to look at that, that, uh, that study in probably next time. Um, but there was, there was a controversy over that paper because people didn't really read it. They were just looking at the title. Right? Right, Kelly? Yeah, well, that one and the other one was why there. Yeah, yeah, there was another one too that you wrote that yeah, was a little. Yeah, dealing, meant dealing to be with. Provocative uh, to the theologians. Yeah, uh, the other Why one, there isn't a 25, 20 year prophecy or something? Yeah, that's the one. Was it? Then, yeah, why, why there's not a 25, 20 uh, year period of continual punishment for literal Israel found in Leviticus 26. Mm -hmm. That's because. Leviticus 26 for literal Israel is fulfilled in periods of 70 years, 
right? So, but anyway, in 2015, in the fall, I was looking at that. So I was dealing with the Babylonian captivity and these periods of 70 years. Now, once I had worked out... remember getting... Yeah. So once I had worked out those periods... You said I remember that being at that camp meeting and so on. I was at a camp meeting following that one where it was actually quite contested and heated, I was if I might say. Brother, I had your back. <laughs> that was 2015. I, was just, I couldn't believe yeah, it, Kelly, the reaction. That was 2015. That's the camp meeting I'm talking about. 2015. That's yeah, when the paper... I'm came. speaking about the one... You weren't at the one where where uh, I'm speaking of. I don't think you could. I wasn't at the one in 2015. That's that's what I'm saying. I wasn't oh, there. Oh, you were oh, there. I, I wasn't there. Yeah, I was. I was. Okay. Anyway. Okay. I thought it was the following year. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Now Stephen just put a note there. The 26th day of the fourth month in 1840 was July 27th on the Gregorian calendar, and July 15th in the Julian. And that's that becomes significant as well. So there's all of these symbols uh, in. Um, so so we, he had a Julian date, as we talked about. He didn't use the Julian date in um, 1840 to count the, for the 15 days to August 11th, because if he had started with um, uh, the Julian date, I mean, it, it would have been completely different as well. So there was all these different choices he had on how he was going to figure out that prophecy. But we looked at that last week. And what I want to look at this week is Ezekiel. Now, these two prophecies are going to come together in the study of Ezekiel. That is, as I was going through the chronology of the Babylonian captivity, and and I originally had worked this out roughly in 2014, uh, but I noticed a key. And so... We're going to go through this. I, I, I want to try to go, go a bit more slowly uh, than I usually do. So one here is I have um, all the dates in the book of Ezekiel. So this is 2016. At the time, I didn't have the calendar converter. Um, and I was trying to work out the exact date that each of Ezekiel's visions are in. And um, me and, uh, and, and Michael... So Michael Chapman was there. He was one of the staff at the School of the Prophets. Stephen was there. Me and Heidi were there. And um, But Michael had been influenced a, a lot by um, Mark Bruce. And Mark Bruce was opposed to some of the stuff that I was saying in regard to chronology. So, so Michael was trying to sort this out. And, um, and there was questions he had that I couldn't answer at the time because some of these details regarding um, Ezekiel especially were a problem. So the one thing we know about the book of Ezekiel is that he's going to begin prophesying on the fifth day of the fourth month. Now at that time in 2016, the idea of midnight is a new idea, right? Um, it, it's, it's entering into our lines in 2000. 16. Um, now, not everybody here watching this video remembers that history. Um, but what happened is we had uh, the midnight cry was introduced as the fifth day, uh, first day of the fifth month in 2014, right? Now, in 2013, you know, in at the end of August um, or in August, the movement started studying uh, the midnight cry, trying to place its date, like trying to know exactly when did Samuel Snow give the midnight cry. And so it, it took a little while, but it's going to be Noel who's going to present uh, the number of days from the first day of the first month to the first day of the fifth month, and then the number of days from the first day of the fifth month to the tenth day of the seventh month. And so we're going to have uh, the midnight cry as this powerful symbol um, and then we're going to look at this symbol in scripture as, you know, so we're going to look up and what are the first days of the fifth month that we find in scripture? Any, anybody know offhand what events happen on the first day of the fifth month? You have Aaron. You have what? Aaron, is he dies, yeah. Aaron. Yeah. 
Aaron dies on the first day of the fifth month. Um, do we have any other first days of the fifth month at that time? Aside from Ezra? Right. So we had Ezra, right? So we had uh, the first day of the fifth month in Ezra, obviously, we're going to start with. So, and, and then we notice, well, the first day of the fifth month is in Ezra from the first day of the fifth first day of the first month to the first day of the fifth month, is this journey from Babylon to Jerusalem. And so we have that first day of the fifth month, and then we say it's a symbol, right? And we look at it with the death of Aaron, and we ha- we say, well, the first day of the fifth month is there uh, with, with the death of Aaron. Now, in 2000, um, I think it was in 2015 or early 2016, when I started studying the Babylonian captivity and looking at Ezekiel is that I noticed that there is also another first day of the fifth month. And that's August. It says here, August 9th, 586 BC. So uh, when I, when I was trying to work up a calendar back then, I wasn't really sure exactly. I didn't have a calendar converter and I would have to uh, figure these things out sort of by, um, by rote, I guess you might call it. Uh, I'd have to figure it out each time. And um, so when I get to the first day of the fifth month, I put there August 9th, but it was actually August 8th. Now, now there's another problem with that because it is August 9th um, if we used the biblical calendar. But I came to understand that actually Ezekiel was using the Babylonian calendar. So I know this is a little bit confusing to people. I don't like to bring in all this confusion. But uh, the Babylonian calendar and the biblical calendar are essentially the same. They're both solar lunar calendars. But the biblical calendar, um, they actually count the months. Now, Ezekiel is using a numbering of the months here, as you would expect. He's not going to use the month names. And he's numbering the months in connection with um, the idea of uh, the biblical calendar. And that's why I first thought, well, he must be using the biblical calendar because the Babylonians don't number the months. But how does he determine a month when he's in Babylon? What What is he going to do to determine the month? He's in captivity. Yeah. New moon. Okay, well. How do you determine the new moon? Observation. Okay, well, who, who, yeah, so it's the first visible crescent, but uh, are you always going to be able to see, if if everybody just looks at the first visible crescent, um, is everybody always going to end up with the same start of the month? No. Probably not. No, because it depends where you are, depends on um, the, as- the the atmospheric conditions of where you are. You know, if there's there's a little bit of moisture in the air or maybe dust in the air, you might not be able to see it from one location, but from another case, the location you might be able to, right? So the way that the, the, the month is determined is is not really by observation of one individual, but by consensus, that is, you're going to know which day of the month it is because other people know which day of the month it is. But it's it's sort of a group consensus. There's not really an, an official, you know, and, and when you look at rabbinic literature and they talk about how the month was determined, they're going to be writing, you know, a few hundred years after the destruction of Jerusalem. And they have this elaborate story about how, you know, that's going to be at the temple and there's going to be this official, uh, determination of the start of the month, um, by, you know, uh, people who are watching for the, for the first visible crescent. And this is manufactured. It's not how it happened, especially in the time of Christ. There was not really a difficulty to know when the month was because everybody knew because you have this consensus of observation. Does that make sense to people? You didn't, you didn't necessarily have to go out and look at it, um, individually to know because other people would know and other people know because other people looked at it. So people could tell when the beginning of the month was. So it's not, it's not something that's um, 
officially done. Everybody knows. And, and so when the Jews count, though, the months, remember, they start with the first day of the first month, and then the first month is going to have 30 days, and the second month, 29, and the third month, 30 days, and the fourth month, 29, and the fifth month, 30 days, and the sixth month, 29, and the seventh month, well, they could have 30 or 29, same with the eighth month or the ninth month or the 10th month or the 11th or 12th, or if there's a 13th month, they could have 30 or 29. So there is a difference between how the Jews count uh, the year than the Babylonians. But as far as the month itself is concerned, it's just going to be something that's by consensus. And uh, Ezekiel is going to be counting the month. Now, for the most part, they're going to be the same. If you look at the Babylonian calendar and you look at the biblical calendar, the vast majority of the times, the, the months and dates are the same. Now, the Babylonians have some other peculiarities where they can add an embolistic month, that is a leap month. They can add it between the 6th and 7th, which the Jews do not do not do. Because on the Jewish calendar, you always want the 10th day of the 7th month to be the 187th day of the year. Okay. But anyway, just getting back to this here, um, when I looked at the first day of the fifth month in in the prophecy of Tyre, and we're going to look at that, um, we saw this symbol. So just open this up. And this is in Ezekiel 26. So we know that uh, the walls of Jerusalem are broken down on the ninth day of the fourth month. So that's the ninth of Tammuz. That's going to be the end of the siege and in, in 586. And then it says it came to pass in the 11th year, that's the 11th year of Zedekiah, in the first day of the month that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, because that Tyrus, Tyrus hath said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is broken. That was the gates of the people. She has turned unto me. I shall be replenished. Now is she laid waste. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Tyrus, and I will cause many nations to come up against thee, as the sea causes his waves to come up. And they shall destroy the walls of Tyrus and break down her towers. And I will also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. Right Now, so there's going to be this prophecy against Tyre. Now, it says it's the 11th year, so that's the year in which the, the, the Jerusalem was destroyed. But it says it's the first day of the month. Well, which month is this where Tyrus is mocking Jerusalem for having uh, the walls of Jerusalem broken down? So the walls of Jerusalem were bro broken down on the ninth day of the fourth month. So which month is this that, that we have Tyrus mocking? Not a, not a related okay. question exactly, but Tyrus, was that the city where they uh, had, to, had to build a bridge, a road across a waterway? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they scraped the dust off the rock to mm -hmm. get it. And that was a prophecy that the very dust would be scraped off. To yeah. No, it's gonna, sort of yeah. And it's going to have this happen over like, I mean, the Greeks attack Tyre and so does uh, Babylon. Right. So, but yeah, that's the but city. You, talking about. That particular part of the prophecy was that the dust of the rocks would be scraped, scraped off to make the road. Mm -hmm. The dust of the rocks, something like that, yeah, swept. Yeah, yeah that's and, what yeah, it's. Okay. I'll scrape the dust from it. That's tire, right? Okay. So, um, so what month is this then? It, it says it's the first day of the month, but what month would it be? Like, why doesn't it tell us which month? Just a trial, Abib. What's that? That I'm just trying. Is it Abib? Uh, yeah, yeah, the month of of. Um, it's not Aviv. It's not, it's not Nisan. It's not the first month. It, because it's going to be after the walls of Jerusalem are broken down, right? So it's since the walls of Jerusalem are broken down in the ninth day of the fourth month, uh, this is going to be about 20 days after that. So it's going to be the first day of the fifth month. And, and you can see this here. There's just, uh, one of the commentaries off to the left here. I'll just make this bigger. They say um, in the first day of the month, but what month is but what month is not mentioned? Some have thought the first month that would be a V, and so it was the first day of the year. Others the fourth, 
the same in which the city of Jerusalem was taken, but more probably the fifth, the first of which was 20 days after taking it, in which time the news of it might be brought to Tyre, at which she rejoiced, and for which her destruction is threatened and here prophesied of. So my position is that this is the first day of the fifth month. And 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 so we have this symbol, but something about this symbol in Ezekiel is it's hidden, right? That is, in order to know it's the first day of the fifth month, I have to pay attention. This doesn't say. I mean, he could have just said the first day of the fifth month. And the reason why he just says the first day of the month, because it's pretty obvious if the city was broken down the previous month, he, he doesn't need to say the first day of the fifth month. But it is hidden. It's not something that's on the surface. And, and these are important details in the book of Ezekiel. So uh, when I look on the Babylonian calendar, I'm going to show you this here. Okay, so what we have here is um, is just the calendar converter. And what I did is I, I took all of the dates in Ezekiel, and I, I placed them down here. you got the biblical years. I'm just going to go to the Gregorian Julian years. So Ezekiel is going to begin his prophesying. I'm going to try to make this a little bigger. It gets a little crowded. But. So he's going to begin his prophesying on July 21st, 592 B.C. And that's going to be on the fifth day of the fourth month. So in 2016, we're just addressing this symbol, the fifth day of the fourth month. And so we we start looking for the fifth day of the fourth month in the Bible, and we find it in Ezekiel chapter 1. Now, in Millerite history, the fifth day of the fourth month is Boston, right? And it also happens to be July 21. Uh, but it's going to be July 21 on which calendar? Gregorian. Gregorian, right? So this is a Julian date in 592 BC. But it's the fifth day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. But in Millerite history, Boston, which is midnight, is going to be July 21st on the Gregorian calendar. And, and this is a, a, you know, it's it's an unlikely coincidence, Right? It's not, not likely that you're going to have this happen. Okay, so here's a little chart. So in Ezekiel, you're going to have these significant dates. So I'm going to look at this one on the bottom here. i got another chart above this. So on, on the bottom of this chart, you can see we have the first day of the first month. Now that date is in Ezekiel 29, verse 17. It's actually going to be a prophecy regarding Egypt. But it's interesting that Ezekiel has 13 dates in his book, 13 dated visions. And he's going to have one that's the first day of the first month. And and that, of course, in Millerite history, the first day of the first month is the disappointment, April 19th, 1844. And then, of course, we can see when Ezekiel begins his prophesying, it's the fifth day of the fourth month. It's in the fifth year of Jehoiachin's captivity. Um. But Boston is July 21st, 1840. And in both of those, they're going to be July 21st. Just one is Julian, one's Gregorian. And then we have Exeter. So that's going to be the first day of the fifth month. That's August 15th. Now, in the book of Ezekiel, that's not going to be August 15th. But it's going to be the first day of the fifth month. Um, and that date... Um, is going to be, as I know how it's, so the first day of the fifth month, let me show you here. So it's going to be August 8th, but I just want to show you the difference. So this one, if we looked at the biblical calendar, August 8th, this is the Julian date here, August 8th is actually the last day of the fourth month. Um, but you can see here, if we look at the Babylonian calendar, uh, the first day of the fifth month is August 8th. So that's the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar. So that's the date in which Tyre is going to mock um, the Jews, right? Mock Jerusalem. Okay. And then we have, um, so I'll go back to this. 
And then we have that's another right. table that's also in Ezekiel. So that one was Ezekiel 26, 1 to 22. Um, somebody had a question? No, I had heard you like saying that August, August 8th was the first of the fifth month, yet in my mind I, I knew August 15 as the first of the fifth month. Right, in 1844. But in uh, 586, it's going to be the eighth day of the eighth month. Okay, so it's, it's going to be a different date. In because it moves around with the biblical calendar, um, it's always going to line up on a different date uh, on our calendar each year, right? Now, it, of course, it's going to repeat that sometimes because uh, it only has a span of so 30 different dates that it can choose um, because a month is 30 days long. So there's a one in 30 chance that if you pick, uh, if you look up, let's say, uh, the fifth day of the fourth, fourth month, one in 30 times, it's going to be July 21st overall on an average. I mean, you might, you might find that, uh, in less than 30 times, you find it lining up. Um, and then, you know, if you went like year by year, and then you might find sometimes it might be, you know, 50, 50 years and it's not going to line up. Um, so, so it lines up occasionally. But in in um, 586, uh, the first day of the fifth month does not line up with um, uh, August 15th. It lines up with August 8th. Now, so we know that the first day of the first month, that lined up in both years. And the same is true on Ezekiel 40. So in Ezekiel 40, we're going to have the 10th day of the seventh month. But again, this is going to be a hidden date. So these were some of the keys that I was coming to understand in 2016. So when I was studying the, chronic, uh, the chronology of the Babylonian captivity and I was looking at Ezekiel um, in 2016, we find that in the five and 20th year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the city was smitten, in the self same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me thither. And the visions of God brought me into the land of Israel and set me upon a very high mountain by which was the frame of a city on the south. And he brought me thither and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass with a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed. And he stood in the gate. And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears and set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee. For to the intent that I might show them unto thee, art thou brought hither, declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. And behold, on the wall of the outside of the house round about and in the man's hand, a measuring reed of six cubits long by the cubit and a handbreadth. So that means each one of these cubits is a 21 inch cubit. Right, not an 18 inch cubit. And so he measured the breadth of the building one read and the height one read. So anyway, he's going to be measuring this. So what is this scene of when he's measuring the city? What, what is it describing? You can uh, connect it to a judgment. Okay, we can connect it to a judgment, right? And, and we can go to, um, uh, Revelation 11 verse 1. And there was given me like a reed unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and them that worship therein. And the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So we're going to have the, the, the 42 months, which is the 1260 days, which is 1260 years. So in Ezekiel 40, you're going to have this reed. Now, this reed is six cubits long, and each of those cubits is 21 inches. How many inches long is this measuring reed? If it's six cubits long and each cubit is 21 inches. 126. So it's 126 inches. So is that a coincidence that we see a measuring here of the city, the other one of the temple, um, and that that one is talking about a period of 1260 days and the other one is talking about a read of 126 inches. Is that a coincidence? Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. So so this is this is shows that there are symbols here with these numbers. Now, as far as the month, it doesn't tell us what month it is, but it has some keys. So one is it says it's the tenth day of the month. Now it's the fourteenth year after the city was smitten, and and I know this 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 is this was a very difficult puzzle to piece together. Um, because the fourteenth year, um, how how would you count since the city was sit, smitten? So if the city was smitten in um, five eighty six, uh, the fourteenth year would be what year? The math would say five seventy two. Well, the, if we counted fourteenth, that's an ordinal, ordinal count. So we would say five seventy four, wouldn't we? Am I doing that right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I have to do so. So eighty six, eighty five, eighty four, eighty three, eighty two, eighty four. Okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm okay. I think you're right. It would be five seventy three, just the fourteenth year, right? Did we do that right? Well, you guys... I'm just sort of saying it's five eighty six and it's the fourteenth year, so just I'm not really. I'm just sort of just taking the numbers as they are. Fourteen yeah. minus. <laughs> From 586 is 572. 572, right? If you subtract 14, it's 572, right? Yes. But 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 it's it's an ordinal count, so it'd be 573. Okay. So yeah, because we're counting backwards, and you know, BC going towards AD. Um. Yeah. So we we got this negative count, and it, and so. So the fourteenth year would be five seventy three, okay. If the if the city is destroyed in five eighty six, okay. So we have some other things. It says it's the twenty the twenty fifth year of our captivity. Now, part of the problem in Ezekiel is we're going to start with um, it says in the thirtieth year in the fourth month in the fifth day of the month I was among the captives by the river of Kibar. That the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. And in the fifth day of the month, which is in the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity. So uh, King Jehoiachin was taken captive in 597, March 16th, 597. So when would be the fifth year of Jehoiachin's captivity? If, if we use this same way of counting ordinal. Five many. It, was, it would be 593. If we if we use the same way of counting that we're counting, so obviously he's, you know, we could argue, well, this is 593, and um, and then if we're going to count then the 25th year of the captivity, uh, we would say that's 574, and then if we use the 14th year of since the city was smitten, we'd have to argue the city was destroyed in 587. And there are people who do that. They say, well, these are just ordinal counts and they're the same. Okay. But there's something else happening uh, that we need to pay attention to. So one is which month is it in, in chapter 40? And, and we have a month that would be the 10th day of the seventh month. Right. That is, if it's the 10th day of the seventh month, um, we also have something in Ezekiel 1 where it talks about it's the 30th year. Now, the 30th year would be the 30th year of the Jubilee cycle. And if we count to 573, and I'm not going to show you, I'll, I'll show you a diagram. But we would find that the, the, the 50th year is going to begin uh, on the 10th day of the seventh month. So the Jews... In commenting on Ezekiel 40, they argue that it's the seventh month because it says something here as well that you don't see in the King James. But if you look in the Hebrew, if you could read Hebrew, you would see it quite clearly. So it's going to say that it's, um, you see these numbers here, 7218, Rosh. And then you look at this number, Shana, and there's a hat in front. <coughs> And there's a, a bet in front of this. So it says in Rosh Hashanah. What's Rosh Hashanah? 
When normally is Rosh Hashanah? End of the year, normally September, October. Okay. Well, it's the first day of the seventh isn't month. Isn't it? Right? Isn't it like Christmas for the Jews? Isn't it like Christmas for the Jews? You're, you're thinking of Hanukkah. Rosh Hashanah is the, the new year. Okay. And the new year normally begins on the first day of the seventh month. But whenever it's the tenth day of the seventh month is Rosh Hashanah, then it's going to be a Jubilee. Does that make sense? This is what the Jews say. The tenth day of the month, if it's in Rosh Hashanah, is simply telling you it's the tenth day of the seventh month. Now, the King James translates it as the beginning of the year. Um, and so some people think this is actually in the spring. But in the spring, they have another w- word for the beginning of the year, which means uh, the return of the year. But this is the head of the year. The head of the year is in the fall. The return of the year is in the spring. They both refer to a beginning, but a different type. That is, this is, in a sense, the top of the year. Because Rosh means head. It can mean first, um, but in a different sense of the meaning than how we would always use first. right? So Rosh Hashanah in the 10th month is the 10th day of the seventh month. And and so I, I worked out all of this, and let's see if I can find uh, the chart. Um, should be right here somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this one should work. So what we have here, this is Ezekiel's chronology with the years written out. Um, and, and you can see here, we're going to have... Uh, in 592 BC, you got the fifth day of the fourth month. I don't know if people can see this really well. It says uh, that's Ezekiel chapter one, verse one to two. That's going to be July 21st, and that's going to be in the 30th year. Doesn't say of what, but if it's in the 30th year, um, it's counting the 30th year of a jubilee cycle. And if you keep counting and you get to here, you're going to have the 49th year here. So, um, so if this is 30. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's going to be the 49th year. And, and the 50th year then would begin on the 10th day of the seventh month, right? And you can see that's in 572, 573. Right. It's going to begin the Jewish year 572. Right. Does that make sense to people? So it's telling us it's a jubilee. And and that makes sense with Ezekiel chapter one. Okay. And then back here, um, we have 586. That's going to be the year in which the temple is destroyed. It's going to be the last year of Zedekiah's rain okay and then you'll see that we have this captivity one of the things that we see about the captivity is it's counted fall to fall but the red zedekiah's reign is counted spring to spring and and i'm not going to go through this in all all the detail of it but but the reality is was once i understood this i could look at ezekiel 40 and date this and that date in Ezekiel um, 40 is the 10th day of the seventh month. But it also happens to be October 22nd, 573 BC. So that means Ezekiel begins his prophesying here on at midnight, or part, you know, pardon me, not midnight. Uh, he's going to begin his prophesying here at midnight right there. That's the first day of the first month. And then he's going to have his last vision that he writes out as being uh, October 22nd. So can we see that this shows that Ezekiel is typifying Samuel Snow? Right? Because he's going to start prophesying at midnight, right, the fifth day of the fourth month, on July 21st. 
And then his last vision is going to be October 22nd, 1844. So Samuel Snow is proclaiming October 22nd, 1844. Now, when I, when I did this presentation, so I'm going to go back here. This is what I presented in 2016. So this is going to be July 20, July 16th, 2016. I'm going to be presenting this study. And you know, I have this chronology here. I explained some of the stuff about it. I have these charts here as well. And I, I draw it out on the whiteboard there at the School of the Prophets. So this is going to be the study that I do um, because of the power outage um, and uh, the storm. So there's a whole story behind all of that. Uh, but I end up doing this sermon that I wasn't scheduled to do. Actually, Daniel from Brazil was scheduled to do it, but uh, he couldn't do it. So because he couldn't he couldn't get his stuff translated because his power was out. So I ended up doing it. Um, and um, so I deal with uh, some of the chronology, Jeremiah's chronology. And then uh, the whole chronology of, of Daniel. And then this chart here of Ezekiel's chronology, right, that I showed you, sh showing where the 25th year of the captivity in the 14th year since the city was smitten. And it's also the Day of Atonement. And it's going to be October 22nd, 573 B.C. Okay. Now. The main thing, though, that happened with Ezekiel was um, I started to uh, understand some other things. So there, there's some things here about the siege. And what we found is that the siege begins on the 10th day of the 10th month in the ninth year of uh, Zedekiah. Right. So it's the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign. It's not the ninth year of the captivity because the captivity is counted fall to fall. And if we counted it in the years of captivity, um, we would actually have to move it one year earlier. But it's in it's in the year of Zedekiah's reign, which is spring to spring. So the siege begins on the 10th day of the 10th month in the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign. And, and in our time, it's actually going to be um, January 6th, 587. Right. And then the siege is going to end in uh, the 11th year of Zedekiah on the ninth day of the fourth month. That's when the walls of Jerusalem are broken down. And so you can see that there's this period of time in which the siege occurs and, and you could count out these months. So it's going to be one, two plus so that's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 months. Right. From when the siege begins to when the siege ends. Does that make sense? So 18 months is a year and a half, right? And then the temple is going to be destroyed a month later. So that would be 19 months to the temple being destroyed. Okay. And, and we have some symbols. What's that? The months there, you're just taking them as what, Julian calendar? Nope. Those are biblical months. Should there not uh, be like a, a 13th month in there somewhere? Um, yeah, you, you could be right uh, that uh, there should be a 13th month in there, actually. This is what I did in 2016. So I don't know if I, I, I don't think I did it correctly. Because, um, yes, let me see here. Mm, I'm just going to look at the calendar converter, see if I have any of those that. Uh... Okay, so when we look at the calendar converter, so we're going from. Uh, 587. And yeah, so there should be 13 months in that year. So there would actually be an extra, extra months. You're correct. So here in, um, that's not the right chart. Where's the chart I had? That's Ezra. Where, where was this other chart? <laughs> Ended up on the wrong. Okay. So we had, yeah, this is actually the correct chart. So I'll just show you this. 
Here it is corrected. <clears throat> okay, so you're going to see there's going to be a 13th month in that year. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, there's going to be a 13th month added. Okay, so it actually is 18 months and 29 days. Now, in our calendar, it would be a, a year and a half, roughly. So it's going to be a bit more because you're going from January 5th. If you went to uh, July um, 5th, it would be exactly a year and a half, right? But it goes to July 18th. That's the date the walls of Jerusalem are broken down, July 18th, 586. The ninth day of the fourth month in the 11th year. I know this is a lot of information. And, and we're going to look at this in more detail. So we're going to spend a bit more time on Ezekiel. Um, but what the thing that I'm pointing out here is we have a bunch of symbols. So, so this in Ezekiel, he's going to have a, a prophecy that begins on the first day of the first month. Is that a symbol in, in 1844? Right? It is. He's going to have begin prophesying on the fifth day of the fourth month. That's a symbol. He's going to, um, uh, he's going to have a prophecy on the first day of the fifth month. That's a symbol. And he's going to have a prophecy on the 10th day of the seventh month. And in the midnight one, the fifth day of the fourth month and the 10th day of the seventh month, they're going to be the same date in our calendar in 1844. He also has another prophecy on April 19th, which is going to be the seventh day of the first month. And then also we see that uh, the city of Jerusalem is broken down on the 18th of July, July 18th. That's another symbol. The 10th day of the 10th month is also a symbol. And then we have, of course, Ezekiel chapter 8. That's going to be a, begin on uh, the 5th day of the 6th month in the 6th year of Jehoiachin's captivity. And that vision is going to end on the 6th day of the 6th month of the 6th year. And that's also going to be a symbol. Right? So in the book of Ezekiel, are we going to say that these symbolic numbers that show up are insignificant? Are we going to just dismiss them because we can't use symbolic numbers? No. Yeah. We, we, we can't ignore them. I mean, they tie us to Millerite history. And, and the chances that they would be a coincidence, um, it's, it's hugely astronomical. Like, I, I figured it out one time, and it was, I, I didn't do it right. I recently did it, and, and I believe it, it was um, something like 15, uh, you know, like whatever it was, times 10 to the power of 15, something like that. Maybe it was 16. The chances that these dates in Ezekiel, whether we take the Julian dates or the biblical dates, and, and look at those main way marks that we have, right? We have uh, the first day of the first month, the fifth day of the fourth month, and the first day of the fifth month and the tenth day of the seventh month. That's what we had in 2016. And you know, I'll do it this way. Get this Boston one again, right? This is what we had in 2015. We had a chart that kind of looked like this, this part of the chart, pardon me, from here, right? So we had these waymarks. Remember, we used to always just have three waymarks. But in 2016, we saw that Midnight and the Midnight Cry were the same waymark, but they're separated. Now, this, this chart I've updated, I put 11.9 as Midnight, July 18, 2020, up in here. So it's going to look a bit different than this. But... In Millerite history, we got this. This was what we had in 2016. And this cannot be by chance that Ezekiel's dates line up in this way is impossible to have occurred by chance. Like, it's just impossible. So we would have to accept this as, as God, right? We wouldn't say that Satan did this. Now, Satan does mix truth with error. But does Satan have control over the sky. No. Uh, does Palmani have control over the numbers? Or does Satan? Yep. Uh, 
Yes. Yeah. So, so Christ is the one who's given us these symbols. Now, we can misuse the symbols. Just because it's a symbol doesn't mean that our interpretation of how to apply it is going to be correct. But we know that these are symbols. And, and we're Seventh-day Adventists. We believe in Millerite history. We have so many witnesses to it. But this witness of these symbols in Ezekiel to Millerite history can't be ignored. So the symbolic use of numbers God uses uh, to point us to something and, and, and to confirm his word. Now, next week, we're, we're going to look at really the, the whole point of what that study led us to. And that was going to be, um, let me see here, I'm looking at the wrong document. So that's going to be uh, this chart dealing with the prophecy of Ezekiel connected to uh, the prophecy of Josiah. This was the insight that came in 2016. So we spend all this time and we spent time studying the chronology of the Babylonian captivity, working out the chronology of the Bible. But it opened up to us something that was extremely remarkable, something that people have been trying to interpret ever since the prophecy was given, as far as I know, is where do how do we count the 490 years and the 40 years of Ezekiel? And, and that revelation came in 2016 in, in this detail. 2014, I, I understood the, the chronology of it, but I didn't have an explanation for it. And that's going to come from the prophecy of Josiah, which is then, of course, going to connect us to Josiah Lich. And that was what was presented on July 16th, 2016. So, so we're going to look at that next week. So, you know, it, as, as a, an overview, I mean, the main thing that I've been trying to point out is that God, God's hand had been leading this movement. And none of this was connected to time set. Right. All of these things that we were finding, there was no intimation, no suggestion that we're going to use this, uh, to predict dates in the future. It wasn't the intent. It was just establishing the understanding of the prophecies in the past and finding these structures uh, and, and sometimes the fulfillment of prophecies uh, that connected uh, with Millerite history. So it was showing that, you know, Josiah Lich was correct in, in his calculation of August 11th, 1840. Um, and it shows that, you know, what happened with Samuel Snow when he wrote his letters, when he presented um, at Boston in Exeter, that this had already been being foreseen in biblical prophecy. And that is, we didn't choose those dates in Millerite history because they fit with something that some system that we had. Those dates were already chosen for us before we noticed their significance. And somebody just looking at, you know, if somebody, you know, goes through one of our presentations, they say, oh, they just chose these dates. You know, they chose these dates in Millerite history. They chose Boston and, and, and because it's the fifth day of the fourth month and, and things like that, right? But we didn't. Those are already chosen for us by history, right? We just recognize the timing of those in relationship, uh, both to the book of Ezra, and to the prophecy of Ezekiel, and also the prophecy of Revelation 9. All of these things come into play to show that they're all interlocked and they could not have been contrived by the mind of man. And only God could control these events. I mean, this is sacred history. You know, Satan's not going to be controlling the dates that Ezekiel has his visions, is he? It's going to be God who decides when Ezekiel is going to have a vision, not Satan. So when people reject the symbolic use of numbers, they ha and they can't pick and choose. They can't say, well, we'll, we'll accept some of these symbolic use of numbers. But, but right now what's being rejected is this whole idea. You know, the fifth day of the fourth month can't possibly be a symbol. The first day of the fifth month, the 10th day of the seventh month, the first day of the first month. 
And what we're doing is we're attributing to Satan what actually comes directly from God. I know it you know, can seem a little bit harsh in saying that, but we have to be careful. If, if God has designed these in biblical prophecy, uh, we have to accept it. So any final comments before we close with prayer? We just have to be careful what we reject. Yeah. Yeah, you know, see, the well, one thing... The and, one I was, thing and I was going to say also, be, be, and I was going to say also, amen to what the brother said there. And basically, put it short, is be careful. Yeah. Yeah, we did, definitely need to be careful. Um, and, um, you know, we just, so, so what's, what's being suggested, you know, is that somehow we are, you know, because we got a wrong date, July 18, 2020, what we expected to happen didn't, that we, we have to then reject all of the evidences that pointed to July 18. What if the Millerites had done that about, well, they did, some of the Millerites, most of them, they did that with October 22. Nothing happened that we expected. Christ did not return. So they're eventually just going to reject the whole idea of applying the 2300 days, and, you know, all of those time prophecies. They're just going to eventually reject them, right? First, they try re-app, reapplying them, but then again, they just keep getting disappointed. And so they just give it up altogether, right? Thankfully, God had a group of people who accepted that they had the right date, but they had misunderstood the event. And so we're, we're in the same boat today as we repeat Millerite history. Okay, but well, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today, for the things that we can learn from your word. And we know, Lord, that there's more here than we can remember. Um, but we ask that you can continue to help us to study these things. We know there's the paper of Ezekiel that people can look at on um, academia. But we also need to study these things out to use the calendar converter and things for ourselves that we need to study for ourselves. And so we ask that you can help us as we search these things. Please be with each person. May you we have your continued care and protection from your angels. And may our minds be focused upon you throughout this Sabbath. Be with us through the rest of this day. And... Um, and thank you for the, the previous week, uh, this week that's ending, and for the new week that's coming. We ask for your continued help in our personal study and the study that we do together. Um, thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.